then follow that trail. Um, I I think it's going to be a close one. It's I mean, I'll talk about it later when we have the Team Liquid MIBR match as well. I think that either way, I think it's going to be... I honestly think most of today's matches are going to be close. All right. Well, I'm going to let you trailblaze this one with the cast. So have fun, guys. And uh, Thank you. Fuck just by an IP Thank against Black Dragons on border. Thank you very much. It is I, the trailblazer. I am with uh, the washed former pro of Niklas, who has... <laughs> um, Thank you. Wait, what are you doing? $372,503 are your approximate winnings. Congratulations, Nick. That is quite the that is quite the total. Thank you. I mean, and for you not being a player, you won, what, 600 bucks? That's actually very impressive, man. How do you uh, do that? 5,500, okay? And it came oh, very damn. hard through my Twitch Rivals matches, where I tried oh, very, Oh, you're a streamer, hard. too. Oh, I, I, I didn't realize. I haven't seen you on for a while. I, oh. <laughs> Hurtful. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just want to say that okay. he's one of your fans. I'm one of them. When you don't stream, I game. I don't need to stream. I am paid dozens and dozens of dollars to work dozens. on these broadcasts. Okay, and that is enough that I don't need to supplement my income and shamelessly sell out. You know, you're not going to see me on any mouse pads. That's for sure. All right, oh, I'm not hawking man. my wares on don't Twitter. Use that, don't use that term. Not code hawking. Code code uh, pengu for twenty percent off here. No, there's actually no code. Don't don't you pay people like that. I don't care I about idea. your mouse pad. I'm gonna say it. <sighs> okay, Parker. Well, at least you care about something today, right? It might not be me care about you, or buddy. my thing that I'm going. No, no, no. Well, we care about siege, right? Got some oh. good siege today. Is it possible to have siege without Pengu? I say no. Oh. Mm hmm. Okay. Starting on no, border. I These two teams undefeated. Nick. You said. The ninjas in pajamas would win. How clear cut do you think this victory will be for them? Uh, I mean, I'm not sure I want to go as far as say like clear cut, like oh they're gonna stomp them seven one. But I am expecting an IP to show up in like oh I said like peak performance. I said earlier like their game against Miners and Chalet, yeah, it was a seven two victory. But it was so slow and sloppy. It's like, what are these guys doing? This is border NIP starting defense, and I look at the lineup right. They're feeling it. Rook dock combination, you know it's gonna be a bang of a round, and you get the warden as well. This is an IP saying we want to fight you everywhere in the map at the same time, all at once. Look at this lineup. Rook dock, oh my goodness. I mean, <laughs> I saw the armor packet put down, and I was like, are my eyes betraying me? No. What's going on here? Oh. Yeah, this lineup from Black Dragons, things are very normal on attack, I will say. This is an aggressive hold from Nip off site. Over towards the lobby area. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that stands out is the Nuke and Laura, right? You don't see Nuke that often border these days, and you don't have that much map to work with. It's usually pretty obvious when you're going to get into a conversation with Khans. Oh. See, Dabber said he was a great player, and look at that. He's not things up in a 2 series streak. Very correct. Ninjas in pajamas getting on the board first. And you've taken out the Ash, you've taken out the Yana, that's pretty much all of your soft destruction, with the exception of the four Rotero drones in the hands of Stem, who has been an extraordinary player so far. He gets the very first pick on his team. Nitro Cell thrown out in desperation as Black Dragons do get on the board, but with the Doc present, Psycho can get his teammates back up to snuff if required. One of the players that you discussed was Loira. Now lurks not too far away from office. So close yet so far. Down goes Stemp to Pino. Black Dragons with only two players remaining. Very challenging spot they found themselves in. It's also old school and IP right there taking the fight to the attackers. They're like, yeah, sure they lost one but have office, but they are fighting everywhere that they're allowed to really. Still got CC control until recently, and even there, he crosses the establishment. and Wizard finds two of his own. This is that good old NIP where they will fight their opponents, not walk back off the bomb side, not hide in corners. No, no, pick up a good weapon, pick up a good operator, and just simply fight. Yep. Ninjas and Pajamas have looked indomitable on both sides of uh, the equation, at least since the start of Stage 2. This team always seemingly having an identity crisis as to whether or not they are a slow team or a fast team, whether we think they're a slow team or a fast team, whether you spend about two hours composing a manifesto with sources 
citing your arguments as to the speed of the pajamas. I think that's how you pajamas. should do it, no? Yeah. If somebody's gonna say, hey, I actually think that you saying they're a slow team right now is, is wrong because they've always been a slow team. And then you go back and you check their average timer for like various years and go, actually, they used to be much faster. I don't think that's a bad thing to do. This is, do your this research. is Nick arguing with Redditors. Example five. Uh, f five, that's very, uh, 500. Yeah, I was gonna say. You know? Yeah. When I was younger, there was no holding back. I mean, it's, it's really open to interpretation. Uh, you and I have been involved with this Ninjas in Pajamas team who actually, maybe these players don't. Psycho, the only long-standing member that used to play for it when they were Black Dragons, but it's always funny to see these two teams do battle because they were known as BD for so long before getting picked up by Ninjas in Pajamas. BD, of course, staying in the mm. scene. They've been a, a stalwart squad here in Rainbow Six. I think Black Dragons has had a team every single year since all the way back at the start of 2017 so yeah i want to say that's true but yeah this nip team obviously has undergone a lot of changes on defense in that first round very aggressive in the way that they held those holds they did not concede map control whatsoever they played very well together and just narrowed down the numbers for black dragons now they pull off the same thing well they've got an avenue upstairs as you can see the beachhead that they've established being over towards Fountain in the office with that Black Mira, or Black Mirror, rather. Players still up there holding onto those spots. Gotta be careful, though. You got soft rotations in Fountain towards Eastus, and if you go too far forward here, you will meet the attacker is literally in their first initial entry point, so it's a fine line oh. you play, but it's again, it's NIP doing it better. I mean, Stemp is there for the so follow-up, but what are you going to get for it? Nothing, right? You have no information. Yep. No time, really, either. I mean, it's very slow pace by Dragons, and this is the problem that you run into when you're attacking on border if the enemy on defense is playing in your face. It's hard to get really into any of the rooms in the map that matters, and you're essentially locked out. Yeah, you look at Psycho. He's just chilling here. No one's really doing anything about it. You know, Psycho's fallen off. Excellent map control for Ninjas in Pajamas. They lose cons to a nade tossed out. Musi on the ground inside of CCTV. Still holding this position. The silhouettes evading him for the time being. Going all the way to top east, where there were players previously. All the while this is happening. Ask shrugging off a little bit of damage. Believe that was Wizard who was lighting him up. Black Dragon's falling a little bit behind the 8-ball here. So now they'll open up the soft panel into the A-bomb site. E-bomb site, rather. Ever notice how it's weird that the A's, A logo pops up over the B? Ask rushes on in, and he's got the diffuser in hand. Coverage from Lawyer inside of Lobby. Psycho will need to play around this. Down goes Ask. Diffuser does not go off. Musi managing to completely blow up this Black Dragon's execute. Now it'll come down to kills. Lawyer tagged on in. Down goes Wizard to Stemp. And it's Musi to clutch out the round as this time the Diffuser is successful for BD. Musi top east. Lighting up live, giving his position away in the process. There's one in hot pursuit. Musi for the reload. Down he goes. Long range with eyes from Black Dragons. Not staring at him, but close enough so that when he hops on that Diffuser, they'll have him. Nook giving the position away, but Stemp is there for backup, and Black Dragons hold true after that Diffuser gets planted. They get the round. And I mean, Black Dragons, yeah, it was looking tough for them, but they actually found like a very small gap in the defense from NIP. They simply didn't create any soft destruction in the wall leading to the Telus bomb site, which meant, yeah, you have workshop control and blue hallway control and, you know, customs in control, but you can't see in towards the bomb site itself from that area of the map. And the bomb set itself isn't very playable on bathroom tellers. So the whole concept of, you know, roaming around outside the bomb site kind of fell apart since there was no soft destruction being made that allowed the low signs of size to be established. So NIP kind of, you know, playing the decision making of where to play on the map really well, they just kind of forgot about the bomb set itself and how they can support that from those external positions. But you got various bombs to go through armory into tellers down to ventilation. And they all kind of play in a very similar, yet very different way, I guess you should say. 
For Tellers, you're playing above the bomb side and spread very thin, like what you saw from NIP. And then eventually you'll get back to the bomb side itself. But for vent for, for um, ventilation worship like we see currently, you're gonna be playing most of this round above the bomb side. Archives, armory, fountain, office, and you can hold everything vertically with the self-destruction that you see from Musi right now with the Solus. The only thing in IP they don't have a lot of is bombsite intel. Because Valkyrie's banned, they're not playing Maestro, not playing Echo. So if Black Dragons can kill Solus and Musi early, that could actually allow them to plan relatively easy later in that round. Black Dragon's lineup is uh, favoring the same operators. lawyer has been the flex pick, which is something that we've come to expect. Stemp was actually on the same role, I think it was two play days ago that we were talking about it, where Stemp was yeah. just juggling operators, playing like five operators over the span of the six rounds. Good flexibility. Talked about Intel being the name of the game. Well, the previous round, the deficiency for Black Dragons, especially during the mid round, was lack of intel themselves, and you have to suspect that leaving the Solus up, not punishing Musi on those roams, was doing them quite harm. I mean, if you looked at Black Dragon's drones at the time, they only had four on the board by the final minute and a half of the round. That's not an ideal number. And just a little bit ahead of that at this point. Still got one drone in back pocket, five have been deployed. As the rubber hits the road upstairs, again, nip holding on to Fountain. This has been a big focal point of all three of the bomb sites that they have defended so far. Previous round, Black Dragons weren't really proficient at shaking them off of it, but they just punched the site instead, forcing Nip to retake, and that strategy proved to be successful. It's a good change from them. Again, they kind of get what they want. Upstairs control, big presence. No one's dead yet either from the attacking side, and that's the most important thing here, because in IP, you're gonna have to fight for Armory, surely. If you surrender all of top floor, you will lose bombs out shortly after. There's the first battle that'll come, and it's right at their doorstep. Loira getting kill number one, but it's a fist fight back and forth. Another team at the moment coming out ahead as Pino keeps the numbers close, oh. but then gets paid for by Stemp. Loira now taking some damage, Stemp too. Musi far back, firing away what remained of Stemp is now gone. Loira, a ghost of himself, Musi taking some damage, still just trying to play keep away, but doesn't have the benefit of an angle in that engagement. Patoxy with the pick, but again, sacrificing a lot of HP in the process. Khans will need to clutch out. 30 seconds to go, and completely oblivious as to where these players are. More damage has been done to Patoxy. Only a single bullet will be required to eliminate Loira and Patoxy with a vector. That will be very quick. Well, let's come at you pretty fast. On still holding this angle. Where are these Black Dragons players going to come from? There's one. Line them up and a pre-fire as Cons wins it. Relatively easy work for Cons, but everybody was so low on HP it could have gone either way. Yep, survive a scare, pick up their second round. Yeah, all it took was a single bullet and a bit of a sloppy play from NIP there again, surrendering the crossfires and not really playing together. Moosey certainly could have tried to help his team of con somewhere on the map at least, and it comes down to that star player that we saw the player highlights on the endless desk. It was Cons, and he's again two times in three rounds, showing up pretty big for his team. He was the man to get two opening kills in that first armory defense earlier on, so well, he's sitting on like yeah, five kills currently. And yeah, you're a support player, but the thing is, this is border. It's like no one's actually a support player on this map. Whether you're a hard return attack or playing mute on defense or mirror, for example, you're always going to have to be next to your teammates and be able to play together and take those questions. Sure, you might drone first on the attack inside, but usually you're going to, you know, have three to four people alive when you need to just frag it out. And those walls get breached relatively early in most of those rounds. The only exception is if you can't deal with the mirror windows, that's just going to be a tall order, really, because you can't break through them. But Black Dragon's done a great job so far in all these rounds at dealing with just that. They haven't really been faced with a wall yet or a mirror that they can't clear. Sure, in the first round, they couldn't clear player positions, and mostly comes down to gunfights and just NIP sheer confidence to play in those spots. Hop reach, though, this time. Amaru Lion instead. This could be one of those rounds where all Black Dragons they want to do is storm the building. Because <laughs> if you ain't got a Hop Reacher, you're up against the mirror? Well, that's just too bad. 
Ask is not at a very productive stage when it comes to kills, and this match so far is no exception. Sitting on 0 and 3, not ideal. This time online with the 417, you should be able to get at least one kill. I mean, there are a lot of offensive threats for Black Dragon, so really anybody could pick up at Slack. It has been Stemp more often than not, who leads the way on Black Dragons with five. Tied with cons for the same amount of kills. It's an EU1D as the magnets go, and oh my! Patoxy flying up the hatch, but Psycho has it under control. Down goes Patoxy, live almost losing his life as well in that duel. And immediately Psycho drops through the hatch, not wanting any more of that engagement. He saw two players from Black Dragons coming at him, and that was too many. Now it's live inside of security. Looking towards that armory wall. It'll be a second attempt for Black Dragons on this bomb site. They've already gained map control faster than they did in the previous attempt, so that's good, even though they did lose somebody maybe a bit too early. I was going to say, that comes at a cost. I mean, Ask's almost dead as well. And it's just a bit of a missed timing there from Black Dragons. So the five spangs didn't fully pop before Batoxy went up the hatch, and because of that security, you know, it can be a bit of a problem for them. Laura does find Khan, still so back to a 4v4, but every time Black Dragons gain something, they also lose something elsewhere. Stemp will give an advantage to Black Dragons, but again, the HPs, we have to focus on them live and ask. Very hurt. Stemp now taking excessive damage from that goo mine. Just trudging away outside. It has abated. Every single member of Black Dragons hurting at the moment. And while they do have a numbers advantage, a couple bullets from Nip could very quickly change that. Flashes go out towards Pino now. As the push comes in, Musi doing a little bit of team damage. There's live to capitalize Stemp drops. Loira next in tow, but Pino's holding court. It's just Ask who can't ask for a kill. Pino with a shred of HP gets the job done, and Nip win another round. <laughs> it's uh, it's crazy to think that the way that Pino gets that 3k in the clutch is actually from sprinting fully blinded, giving up office control, and almost getting team killed shortly before that play happens. And the reason why it worked out so well is because Live checked the corner and found the kill, and surely there's not going to be two members playing next to one another inside of Fountain because... That's not a good position to be in. But sometimes being in a bad position makes it a good position because it's just absolutely unpredictable. And it's the same reason why we make the argument that sometimes the best position is the worst because it's the most predictable. It's how we see a lot of these players in like 1v1s and 2v2s kind of knowing where the enemy is just due to a pure assumption as to they're probably going to be playing in this strong spot over here. There you go, the bottom of your screen. Oh, we look at the beautiful top down of Border. Team that wins this match gets first place in their group. A lot on the line here between these two teams, as you might have heard from the desk. Nobody is lost. The only, I believe the exact wording was, hold on, let me do my best impression. <clears throat> oh no. The only blemish on their record is an overtime against FaZe Clan. Other than that, Nip have been exceptional. <laughs> it's hard to emulate CDAPs. No, it even is. even just doing that now like made me a bit like <clears throat> like I need to like clear my throat. Just trying to do his voice. It feels like, it sounds like maple syrup being poured into your ear when you listen to him. Aww. He gets real close to the microphone. Yeah, I mean it's the only blemish is that Nip got pushed into uh, extra innings against Phase Clan, but given how Phase Clan has. Looked for the most part, that's not really that much of a surprise. Enror, by the way, has been a staple. Used every single round up to this point. Traded around by yeah. a different grouping of players. It's no surprise, really, given how Black Dragons do want to quickly get in it, build them when possible. Well, Fenrir makes that a lot more difficult. But Ask, he gets that first kill, Parker, he's on the board now, <laughs> ding, 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 one and four to his and takes down the top gunner of cons in the process. It's a big pick for Ask as well. Ninjas in pajamas have gotten first blood, or they've drawn even every single round. This is the only one where Nip have suffered, and Black Dragons have gotten an advantage off that pick. Dog on the board for Psycho does not mean you can get back into it whatsoever. Cons cannot be retrieved. 
Down goes Ask. Only one kill. That's all he's going to get. Now the guns from Black Dragon's coming alive. Musi has one lined up inside of CCTV. Security. Musi gets two of them and immediately dashes away. Still holding the spot. There goes Patoxy. Mid-round looks so good for Black Dragons, but now as we transition out of it, it's gone very bad in a hurry. Stemple look for kills eight and nine. A look is all he gets. No accomplishment. Pino sending us home in the previous round. will do so here. That's four rounds through five. Nip making very quick work of their opponents. And Black Dragons might have a pretty good team performance together, but when it comes to the individual heroics, it's time and time again just NIP finding these incredible kills. I mean, the one tap for Musi to start things off, and just like the 1v3 hold inside CCTV. I mean, sure, the bombside player of Pino also held down his own, but really Musi succeeding above just put them down back to that like two versus one position where NIP, they're once again in the favor despite losing it earlier in the round. And it's happened pretty much every single round but the first, where there'll just be a hero play somewhere on the map that puts NP back into a comfortable position. I mean, Border is very often known as that map that's like Hell in a Cell, you know, that we'll refer yeah. to as. But every single time, it seems what trips up Black Dragons is droning out that top floor, irrespective of where the bomb site is, the big struggle for BD is, yeah, you expect one or two players of NIP to be roaming. And I'd say that's, you know, pretty accurate. But what about the third? What about the fourth? Mm. There doesn't seem to be much of a contingency plan for Black Dragons after they get one or two picks or even suffer the first loss, but then trade it right back. And again, is the culprit the mutes that we've seen a couple times? Is it the Solus that's been run almost every round by Ninjas in Pajamas? There's a lot of questions that I have here, but... For a team that has looked so good so far through this stage, Black Dragons don't look that great on attack against Nip. And I mean, it could be an off day for them. But what we tend to see when teams go from great to not so great is that it's their opponents that hold them to that. It's not that Black Dragons is having an off day, it's that Nip are just so good this stage, they are making Black Dragons look like an average team. And that's quite the accomplishment given what we've seen out of Black Dragons so far. It's certainly a very fair comment, and you know, yeah, sure, it's 4-1 scoreline, but it has been close in most of the rounds, so again, it's not like Black Dragons really are playing bad today, I fully agree with you on that point, on that front. But IP sure are showing up today. They have to, I mean, if you're fighting for first, you'd rather be first, right, every single time, why not? <laughs> but, uh, good news for Black Dragons, perhaps, it's their final attacking round, and they're still in a position to get a 4-2 side swap, which would put them in a decently, like, decently good position, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But going down 1-5, that's like the opposite, that's terrible, right, you have almost no room for error all of a sudden, and your confidence going to side swap is going to suffer a bit, and because it is border, you're going to need confidence starting on attack and starting on thief, just because you're always going to be having a tough time either way. Strategically, border is not the most, like, problem-solving required map. I mean, the mirror windows really is the only issue for most attacking teams. That's because mirror wasn't banned in this particular ma match. So outside of those two areas, those mirror windows go down, it's just down to individual like, well, team play and executing together. Well, they got the bandit this time. There's no way. Oh my goodness. Lyra gets baited awesome. in. Doesn't see Wizard playing inside a fountain. Nip get the first pick. Single bandit battery has thwarted Black Dragon's advance, but Khans gets found out. Tarot drone goes in. Wizard having some trouble. That might be enough to actually blow open the wall as well. So the next challenge becomes those castle barricades. This is not an armory defense. Oh, you might think that. No. Nope. It was successful on that bomb site twice. They can't go back to it. So instead, they're going to go right below it to vents. Nicely played by Live. Cons is bleeding out. Psycho is now dead. Wizard being watched inside a fountain. Bodies lining up. Players stacking up. Just too many for Nip to deal with. Ask a second kill. And suddenly, this timeout from Black Dragons proving to look masterfully done. He knows clutched the last two rounds. A 1v4. This is a mighty task. Inside a bathroom, not even playing in the bomb site, but close enough. He gets spotted on drone. I don't think he knows that. He has to watch the hatch. Pushed by the Yana. That's the real deal. 
Tarot drone to flush him out and live finishes it off. Yeah, you're just treading water at that point, trying not to drown if you're Pino. Because there's really no way that Black Dragons are going to let you win a 1v4 inside of a relatively open bomb site. Black Dragons end up salvaging the first half by winning a second round. 5-1 will not be the advantage that Nip has. 4-2 is still pretty good, but relatively standard. Teams will swap sides. Now, Black Dragons turn to go on defense. Yeah, and there wasn't even Black Dragons in a 4 versus one being like, okay, let's play it safe, let's plant in this corner and hope for the best. No, no, that was four members just running for that kill. One member of the hatch, one each doorway, like Flores was dropping down as well from the corner hatch and stuff, Armory, like, they wanted that kill just guarantee the crossfires to be established because, again, playing on Diffuser and plant control isn't really all that common on border unless you're going for those either rush strategies or the defenders are simply playing so passive that you are allowed the space to go for those plants. I'm curious to see how NAP are going to change things around though, because historically the way that Black Dragons have been attacking this stage and just, you know, across the board, how long has it been playing? And NAP, they don't really have the same style per se. And NAP, they do have a bit of flexibility with cons these days where, for example here, brings out the Osa. We know NAP can play the Monty, which is why Black Dragons banned that particular operator. Otherwise, I would likely see light on this border match, you can imagine. Doga B from Wizard as well for the Rome clear. You're always playing on two horses here, right? Because the Rome is an issue and the site's an issue. And the Doga B and the Osa kind of gives you just both those things covered between those two operators. I like that Nip isn't running with the same lineup that we saw from Black Dragons. I mean, these teams are going to approach this map from a very different perspective. Already changing out the hard breach, but then adding separate tools. You know? Like the Osa, as we see right now, for Cons, who I imagine Cons will probably be the player on this team who cycles through various operators. Osa yeah. finds a lot of value on a wide variety of maps, but with this armory bomb site, Osa provides a ton of value playing outside of that armory wall or even just working with somebody else to push off a roamer independent of the bomb site. Capkin traps Push on the board as well, so. Something yeah, I was gonna see how many of this would pop. Keep in mind. Oh, that's so close. The nate is not quite there. Obviously, aiming for a bit of a blind guess. Perhaps there are yellow pings available and red pings, but live doing good, just moving around, not standing still. He knows if he does, he will get grenaded. Look at this. Three nades out. <laughs> oh, he just dies to a bullet. Oh, first talent shield will go to establish that beachhead over towards break room. Picking off the lesion is a relatively good measure, as now the goo mines will be found by the various feet of Nip. Hans holds the diffuser too, with one talon shield in back pocket. Adds Musi to take some damage over in security. Stamp had a long line of sight, that 1.5 on the warden, so formidable. Warden a very flexible operator at this point, but. I think his gadget is really going to get a ton of value. Though, I mean, Khans does have smokes. It really just depends how Nip wants to apply this. Final minute and the setup now happening on Armory Wall. There go the Selmas to tear through it. And an Osa shield deployed in front. Hmm. How will they do this, though? Because they only have one Talon shield, which just got put down. And it's outside the building. If you smoke off the Warden, well, Warden can see you. You cannot see him. Oh, well, there we go, Cons. Pick the shield back up. This could be a plant angle, perhaps, from an IP. They got decent cover from above and horizontally. Yeah, I really like this horizontal play. Lawyer has been downed. There's been more damage being done to Black Dragons, who ultimately lead the way, and it's Steph picking up three big kills. Suddenly, Pino, again, alone against the hordes. Shut down by Patoxy. Things looked like they were going so well for Nip, and then they weren't. <laughs> Just like that. I mean, this is the difficulty of border. Yeah, you can have a plan, you can have a utility, but if the enemy just wins their gunfights, again, strategically, there isn't that much you can force on this map, and it's why it's very unique. It's similar to how Coastline played out back when that was in pro play, where, yeah, I mean, you can have small variable changes in, in strats, like certain operators get changed in or out, like NIP played Mira almost every single defense, and Black Dragons didn't in their first, nor currently in their second round. And it's going to change those small factors as to where you're going to start in your defending position, where the attackers can enter the map easier or with more difficulty, depending on those utility. But at the end of the day, it really just comes down to 
the gunfights. And of course, those can happen in individual clutches like we saw from NIP. It can happen from teamwork, which we saw from Black Dragons last round. It can happen on either side. The most important part is that you play close together and not too far spread out because you're not going to get much value from those depths otherwise. And that's a stat that we started seeing more and more of in recent time where we see the amount of times that a player get traded out, for example. Very important statistic because if you keep dying and nothing really comes out of it, obviously that's a bad death. But let's say Ask, for example, right? Two and five in terms of score. Let's say all five of his deaths have led to somebody else from his team getting a kill shortly after. Those are five technically good deaths, so to speak. And sure, maybe if Ash just got the kill instead, nobody dies, but at least some things comes out of it. The small detail to keep out of here on border because that is going to be how attackers can trade their bodies for map control. Yeah, lose a member, but you gain something for it in a positive way. Very well put. I mean, Cons did pick up a new operator, so I'm in somewhat way vindicated, but it's Pino juggling onto the Bravo. Lots of targets for that Brazilian operator to be able to find and snatch. Cams as well could very easily go in the way of Nip with that Dokubi on the board. Dokubi has been a staple so far with a pretty much a near 100% pick rate, if not a 100% pick rate. Again, it's it's a bit foggy when you're eight rounds in and you're trying to track, you know, 10 operators every single round. Yeah. Maybe I'm just making excuses for myself. I don't know. No, I'd say it's pretty hard, but, but you are correct. Like the pay grade from Dokubi has been very high so far and it's a good reason for it, really. It's one of those can always use this operator, you know, secondary in peace, flashbangs, good primary, secondary, amazing gadget, right? It's just an easy man's tool to use. Click that gadget button, get a global call out of five defenders. If you get an opening kill, hack the phones for camera access. There really is no going wrong with Dokubi. That's why the pick and ban rate is very high across, I want to say, every single region. Mm -hmm. Very impressive from that operator. And curious to see how she's going to keep being played around with as the stage progresses, then to playoffs, and those queues, and eventually the major. This has been the slowest round so far in this matchup. And it's NIP on the attack, but again, as you say, it's slow. All of a sudden, action that occurs. It's cons <laughs> once again, like back in the first round, finding the first kill for NIP. Yeah, you really spoke it into existence there, didn't you, Nick? Just like that. Cons has been so strong at finding these first picks. By my measure, he's got three opening duels breaking in his favor. Again, gets on the board. And follows up with a kill on a Patoxy. Looking for a drop, as he also holds the diffuser. What can't he do at this point? DMR from Pino getting put to work as now Cons will attempt the plant. Wizard, a kill of his own. Nitro Cell goes out. A flawless round from Nip. As Cons starts things, the rest of the team gets involved to end things. No upside to that round for Black Dragons. They could have tied it, but instead, Black Dragons will watch their grips on closing this game. Slip away, nip up by two at this point. Looks like it's uh, NIP. Whenever they take like enough time to really set up, it is really when they're looking their strongest. But it can be hard to kind of break apart because when a team is very slow and nothing really comes out of it, you're always going to be like, okay, looks like a pretty weak attack. Like we saw in that previous round, it didn't look like much was really going on. But then all of a sudden, they get the opening kill and then the round ends like 20 seconds later. So if you can get all your pieces in the right position and then just act upon it at the same time yeah you're going to end the round very quickly but all it takes for things to fall in the opposite way to a round loss is if one or two small things they fall apart you don't have enough time to really redirect your approach there on the attack inside so it's a bit of a risky one but of course if you can make it work very strong one as well now we're going to see that utility being brought out from Black Dragons. The mirror windows are in action, as are the Kite Claws. And this is again where the Doku be. We got to talk about last round, Wizard played flashbangs because there was no real wall deny required or being picked up by Black Dragons. And then now they see the Kaid. What does Wizard do? Well, Doku goes from flashbangs to secondary in peace. So you play the same operator on the same player, but the secondary utility you bring is changed because of your drone phase work that you did to scout out those defending operators with the Mira and the Kaid. All 
Her eyes deceiving me. Is this the exact same lineup from Nip? Same players. Oh, you are you are correct. It's a one to one. We are in a DMR uh, meta. It looks like Wizard Psycho and Pino all bringing the guns. Where if you click fast enough, you can try to emulate auto fire, but not ultimately close. Remember back in the day when you could map it to your scroll wheel and there was no oh, fire rate whatsoever, and you just spin your scroll wheel, and the Buck DMR basically became an, a full auto weapon. Yep, yep. The unkept DMR meta. That was uh, yep. that was something. Didn't really take place in Pro League. Oh however, no, yeah. But uh, there's a thing in ranked and, and whatever else for a little bit, yeah. And uh, the thing, I guess, the thing about it being in Brazil is that because they're playing on land, the DMR will tend to get more play in the in the regular league because DMR is the, usually the approach of pro players is that on land with like you know zero ping and zero delay, etc. DMR will just two tap players in the body. It's nominal. Whereas online, it's a bit more dicey. As might not be coming out ahead in most of his 1v1 engagements, though he has certainly picked things up from the first couple rounds. Nitro Cell will take out Cons. Saw how influential Cons was as just a player, let alone as an operator in the previous round. You have to hope that all your hard destruction is done at this point because there's no more available for Nip in the final minute. But Psycho to take some damage is he toils by the window of what is not the bomb site. This is events and workshop take or nip. Demp is dead to Pino, Ooh. and now Pino will die as it trades right back. Action occurring all over the map at this point. Now it's Wizard punished. There's a down though, no secure. Lawyer walking away as Wizard dies. Musi and Psycho, the only two remaining for nip. Oh my. Ooh. Psycho cannot afford to lose this engagement, but he does. Black Dragons just need a single kill to keep themselves from stopping Nip getting that match point. Using inside a small office knows what needs to be done, but it's a joint effort. Black Dragons get a couple players in on the fun, and they'll pick up their fourth round. They're within one of tying it. There we saw, again, the big difference. In NIP, they play a little bit faster, more spread out, and they lose those members early. They don't seem to have a backup plan. as okay, now we only got four or three members alive. We've lost the hot bridge. What do we do now? And they all just kind of do their own. Okay, let's fish for a kill. They don't find it, so they don't think, find the round victory either. But NIP, they truly need those five people alive so all the way through the first two minutes to seem to find success on their attack so far. So if Black Dragons kind of read into this and just keep on, you know, playing on the offense as they have been, they might be in a great position here on border defense, which isn't typically the place you want to be. Border has been one of the most attacker favorite maps for a long time, but of course things they change. Certain team play style play into effect as well. We do have the mirror open. I'm sure that plays an effect to it. Even though Black Dragons don't tend to always bring the mirror, only playing in one out of four rounds so far. They do have it available if they feel like they need it. But Border also has those really fun rounds. And this might be one of them because NIP, they're showing us an Osa, a Capital, Amaru, Glass, Blitz. So, there is a good old archives rush. We've all done it in rank before, right? You storm in the Akav store, you play in the Akav's window, smoke goes out, flashes go out, etc. It is chaotic. And when you put the Blitz in the mix with all that, you can make a really fast push come out of nowhere. Well, they're in a position to open up that archives door, like you said. The big thing is the Monty ban. In normal circumstances, Monty would take this role. Not to be had. Use the Osa instead. Wizard Smokes will be the starting gun, and there they go. Pino rushing on in. Patoxi at dueling him. Wizard actually killing Psycho. This has gone what? very poor for Nip. Stamp is the only casualty at the moment. As that diffuser in the hands of Cons is miles away from the site. Now it's Pino with 11 kills leading his team. Suddenly Nip in a big advantage and one player's trapped outside. Musi can capitalize. Things look terrible for Nip. Then they win the round and they move to match point. <laughs> what is this game? It was backwards. I mean, they went for an archives execute rush, but they gained armory control. The archives players died. There was actually Amaru and the Blitz, the usual players who will get sacrificed for the plan to go down. Those are the players who actually stayed alive and they got the kills. 
And what was it? A C4 onto balcony, the Caps of Fire team kills and denies the third guy from planting. It was a massacre. But actually, NIP, for the first time so far on their attacks, they looked like they had a really good and instantaneous backup plan when things didn't go their way. Because we saw them rotate towards Armory instead, and okay, Moosey and Pino just kind of killed everybody. But even if they hadn't found those skills, the Diffuser was in its way to get planted in the right position there. So, great plan both in the prep phase of things for NIP, but also great problem solving once it really started falling apart, which was essentially in the very beginning. Give me more of those rounds. I mean, that's way more <gasps> fun, right? Yeah, I gotta say, this... Such as the duality of this match where on defense, Black Dragons really struggled. Or sorry, well, on defense, when Nipper on defense, Black Dragons really struggled to clear out that top floor, but still kept it close on a number of rounds, ultimately lost out. Two of those rounds in particular won by Pino clutching in very impressive fashion. But honestly, those are 50-50 rounds. Very easily could have gone in BD's favor, despite the dominance from Nip that we saw through that mid-round. And then Black Dragon's dominance, where Pino, of course, clutched. Now you get through this second half, where the start of that round was so dreadfully bad for Nip, and yet they still end up winning the round off of gun skill. And this is a point that you and I raised when we watched the Nip match all the way back on Chalet, when we were talking about how sluggish and lethargic they looked, and yet they were still winning in the scrambles that came because they weren't as well coordinated or structured, which is what ultimately led to you then, of course, arguing with the Redditor. So... <laughs> but I mean, it's 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 funny to see this because Nip are keeping their pacing varied across all of these rounds, and I mean, it might confuse us, but it certainly seems to be working. Well, and I think I think uh, a sign of a great team is to ch you know change your pace, you know, quick, slow, quick, slow, etc. But you also gotta find success with both styles. If you're only good on the uh, on the quick one and the slow one, the other one obviously isn't working out all that well. But look at this, another relatively fast round where. In IP, it's okay. There's a guy in customs. Let's just hunt him down. Go from passport, go from jail wall itself, walk on in. And you see Black Dragons, when they get into those battles and they don't win them out, they're running backwards really quickly. They recognize that they only are working in pairs of two. And when one half of that equation falls off, the second member has to just give up that map control because you can't fight one versus three. And NIP just really good at playing together in this round so far. Oh, now the position that Black Dragons wanted to find themselves in. Again, this is a very high-stakes match. These teams looking to claim first place overall. The winner gets that. Nip have one minute to find four kills, and first place is theirs. There's to keep, I should say. Because there is a... Trailing Black Dragons at the moment. Neither of these teams losing. Yeah. It's gonna come down to the wire, I reckon. No one's oh. really making the moves right now, they're holding on. Stem. From Stem. Gives himself away stairs, and now... goes back over to that triple panel. Still inside the building, but he's a little bit behind. Can he catch Nip in an awkward position? He's maybe a bit too slow at this point. The rest of his teammates holding down the fort. The soft destruction work from Nip tries to buy them time. Again, decently slow here as Live gets flashed. Wizard unable to outduel him. Suddenly, the scramble in the final 10 seconds, winning it in favor of Black Dragons, but it's a 2v2. Stemp will need to clutch. Pino getting Diffuser down. Stemp is miles away. Pino should be able to get this one off. Stemp is waiting, but what can you do? He drops the Brava. Taking away that dread mind, giving information, what could be vital information to Nip. As a single kill is all they need to find. He's been terrific all stage. This, this is a tough position for Stemp to be in. Timer running away, looks in the wrong direction. No intel, no real saving grace. Over towards bathroom, but assessing his options, none of them look good. As he gets ever closer, that timer continuing to go away. He gets the pick, but it's all for naught. Ninjas in pajamas win it out. 
Oh boy. I feel so bad for Snap that scenario because he stood still to avoid the lion scan, but then dropped down into the grim mine instead. And it's just, again, the Brava finding value in these rounds. NIP, it looked like it wasn't going to be their round victory. But again, when it comes down to those 1v1 gunfights, it's like playing close together. They're just one step ahead of my dragons because they were playing so far away the bomb site itself. 7-4 was the scoreline, but those rounds were so close, it could have been either way. Yeah, it really was anybody's game. Again, we go back to those two rounds in the first half where Pino won.